Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. We're going to talk today about a speaker resolution test, something I came up with sitting at my desk. And at my desk, I have a near field uh, set up. You can go to the projects page and look under Dennis's rig. You can see it. Now I have two speakers that are more far field set up. So, and I have a chair in the back for listening. And you know, it's been a long time since I bought gear, 15, 20 years, something like that. But speakers are still the weakest link in the audio chain. They really are. I'm sure there's tons of reasons for that, but you know, in my rooms, because the resolution is so high, I'm really hearing, you know, speaker issues all the time. So, I mean, what is a speaker really? It tries to take a source sound and divide it up into different speakers. You know, this speaker handles these frequencies, this speaker handles this. And here's the thing, when it comes out, it's got to sound just like one speaker, one source. That's hard to do. I get it. It's not easy, but they've come, a, they've come a long way. I think the drivers have improved dramatically. And of course, the electronics, I'm sure, have. Because if the amplifiers improve, the electronics of the crossover will improve too, right? So, but you try to get these three speakers, if it's a three-way to sound like one, that's not too good. Amps, low distortion, total harmonic, really low, high resolution. Highest resolution I've heard in years. Uh, we have a class, a class A amp, uh, Plinius, I believe, is the company's name. Class A out of Australia. Wonderful amp. Class, pure Class A power. Um, I keep my feet on it in the wintertime to keep them warm as I'm working at my desk. <laughs> so it's really toasty. Uh, digital sources today, really, really good. High resolution, low distortion, but here's, here's where I'm really impressed. And you wouldn't have thought this. I would have never thought this. Cables, both power, speaker, and interconnect. Amazing. From my day, 15, 20 years ago. I can't believe it, you know. Back in my day, speaker cables was zip cord. Most of you probably haven't heard that term, but it's an old school term for basically what, what 18 gauge, a wire that you use to power electric lamps and stuff. It's the cheap stuff that you plug into the wall that powers your lamp. It's wired through the unit. That's what we call zip cord. That's what we use for speaker cable. Interconnects, uh, whatever it was around, you know, it wasn't a lot of attention and power. Nobody even thought about power cables as a source of noise. Well, that's changed. The cables today, they've really gotten good at getting rid of the noise in the low end and the high end. Now what that does is it allows the mids to really shine because a lot of the gear and the speakers are mid-range designed, if you will, or sensitive probably is a better word. So you get rid of the noise on both the floor and the top end, wow, the mids really come out. Very involving. Digital sources, like I said, are good, high resolution, low distortion. Our goal is to listen to the speakers with minimum room sound in this test. So how are we going to do that? Look at the graphic. We're going to start in the normal position. Then we're going to move forward a foot. Now listen for a while. We're going to move forward a foot. Now all the time from our listening position, we're moving this way. Our goal is to try and get exactly between them so our ears are on the front edge. That's the goal. And go, go past if you can without running into a wall or equipment rack. But the bottom line here is just move through this center position. Listen to the same source. You're going to really be able to hear your speakers better. It's, it's even better than near field. It's not, you know, you don't get the imaging. Well, you do, but you don't. It's not in, in front of you. It's kind of between your ears like headphones. So you can get that, but you can really hear the lows, the mids, and the highs of the speaker without the interaction of the room. So it's kind of taking near field plus a little bit farther into the situation, but do that. Hopefully you got a chair that's on wheels that will move. I do it every day. It's amazing, you know, because I listen to a lot of the same sources. So it's just amazing, you know, the difference. Now it would be great if you can take that kind of resolution and get it sitting in a normal position. Well, you can if you treat the room. Is the farther you go back away from the speakers, you come out of their near field domain, and now you become the domain of the room. The room is the boss, right? So 
just like in critical distance, you know, there's that balance. So you, you, you got to work with that. You can learn a lot, you know, don't be scared to, you know, listen around your equipment, stand behind the speakers and listen. It's how you understand how the energy in the room works. All right. So it's kind of a near field plus example. We walked through the graphics. So, you know, just do two or three steps and spend some time. And it's kind of interesting. And then shoot some comments uh, on the uh, YouTube channel. Little fun, uh, little test, speaker resolution test I came up with. So give it a try. Let us know what you thought. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to. So please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis. So that'll help you. Thank you.